Welcome to Simplified on Powerdrift and welcome back to the Formula 1 series on Simplified. Today we are talking about DRS or the drag reduction system. But before we talk about how to reduce drag, let's first learn what drag is in the first place. The easiest way to picture drag is if you take your hand out of a moving car's window in a safe manner, of course, you will face some resistance if your hand is like this and you will face a lot more resistance if your hand is like this. And that's what drag basically is. It's the force of air that's acting on an object to basically resist it from going further forward. And drag is basically related to the surface area or the frontal area of an object. So a SUV like a G-Wagon will always have more drag than something as slick and slippery as a Rimac Nevera. Now Formula 1 cars also have something else called downforce which is the force of air that acts upon a car to push it down and make it go really fast around corners and downforce is achieved through wings and winglets and other aerodynamic elements and downforce also causes drag. The more downforce you have, usually the more drag you will have as well. So while downforce really helps you go fast around corners, when you reach a straight, that same downforce is holding you back from achieving the true top speed of your car. And that is where DRS comes into play. The drag reduction system basically helps you have the same downforce through corners. And then when you reach a straight, which has a DRS zone, you can basically reduce the drag of your car and achieve a higher top speed. The DRS zone that I just spoke about, that's the first rule we'll speak about for DRS. Basically, each track has demarcated DRS zones. There will be one across a track, maybe two DRS zones, maybe three DRS zones, depending on the layout of the circuit. These are usually on straights or straights which have a slight curvature to them, but they're basically straights for Formula 1 cars anyways. But yes, DRS zones are on straights of a racetrack and they're demarcated. There can be straights where they are not DRS zones as well. So there is a start point of a DRS zone. After you cross that start point of the DRS zone, the driver can press a button, activate DRS and the flap in the rear wing opens to let air flow through and reduce the drag in your Formula 1 car. Basically, it's like a letterbox type flap that's regulated the maximum opening and a lot of other stuff around the DRS flap is regulated. So basically, most teams have about the same advantage through their DRS system and that flap opens, lets air through and you go faster. Basically, that's about it. Now, in a practice or a qualifying session, you can use DRS any number of times and whenever you want to, as long as it's in the DRS zone. Now, in a race situation, there are a few more rules that are attached to the usage around DRS. The first one is that you must be within one second of the car ahead. So if I'm in second place, Max Verstappen is in first place, I'm within one second of him, I can use DRS in the DRS zone and get closer to him to finally try to make an overtake. This is actually where DRS stemmed from. There was a time in Formula 1 where there was very little on-track overtakes happening. The FIA guys got together, they decided how should we make on-track overtakes happen more often. And one way to do that was DRS. It helps the chasing car close up to the leading car and make an overtake. Now this does mean that the guy who's leading the race would not be able to use DRS, but every car before that has at least an opportunity to use DRS. Now the second rule around DRS is that it's only activated in dry racing conditions. So as soon as it starts to rain and the track surface gets slippery, the DRS is deactivated. And the thought process here is that you will need all the downforce you can get to keep the car on the road. So DRS is deactivated. As soon as conditions start to get drier and drier and drier, DRS will be reactivated in the race. Now the third rule is that DRS is activated on lap three of the race. So as soon as the cars start to separate a little, DRS is activated and then you can start making your overtakes again. And that's pretty much it. Basically, the drag reduction system is a flap. It opens to let air flow through and that helps you close up to the car ahead or achieve a higher top speed in a practice or a qualifying session. You can use it if you're within one second of the car ahead in a race and as long as it's dry and you can only use it in the demarcated DRS zones. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching Simplified and if you're enjoying this Formula 1 series, do let us know in the comments below. I'll see you on the next one. Let's